What's up everyone? Welcome to my very humble channel where we go over all things in life because it's not just about diet and nutrition. It's about a 24 hour day and other concepts that we need to think about. Now this fasting trend is something you guys know is not my favorite. And the reason why that is, is because I'm getting so many people who are having health issues from simply not eating. When I first started hearing about the fasting trend, I was like, but why would anybody do that? They could just be in ketosis, right? Especially way back in the day. But again, people are having issues with the junky keto products and people are having issues with, with um, like not eating enough fat and eating just the garbage keto products, not eating enough fat eating too much protein. And so when fasting came around, everyone's like, yes, this is the solution. This is the answer. Let's go for it. Well, as time has gone by, I'm starting to see all of the friggin' problems from the fasting. Yes. And I try to explain to people in, in the most simple of terms how it's so bad for the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal function but there's nothing better than a visual. So let's get into it. Now, one of the things I talk about as a solution or like something to kind of explain to people in certain simple terms, why uh, Hunter Gathers um, didn't have problems with fasting or did they? But let's take a look at Hunter Gathers. This is going to give us a clue, especially talking about how many toxins and things that we're exposed to today. It is insane. Um, yeah. Let's take a look at these guys. All right. These guys are our traditional hunter-gatherers. Pull up an image. One sec. Okay, blow this up bigger. These images are some of my favorite images. Look at these guys, okay? Aboriginal Australian hunter-gatherers looking good. <laughs> Ideal natty physiques. Although these, these guys are not, these are not uh, Australian Aboriginals at all. An Aboriginal is gonna look like this. That's an Australian Aboriginal. So, look at this. This is so interesting. Look at these guys. Look at these. The men on the, I don't know if you guys can see this. The men on the top there, they still have pecs. They still have, let me see if we blow it up even more. Okay, they still have pecs. They still have shoulder cuts, they're lean, look way over at the top, and then the bottom row of these hunter-gatherers on the, on the uh, this side. So the problem is we don't live like they do. We do not live like these people. We don't get enough vitamin D. We don't get outside. We're exposed to toxins. We're exposed to forever chemicals. We get cookie boxes when we're young. We're <laughs> we um, are, have been on sugars and processed foods. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. People are heavily medicated. Kids get on Adderall. Like There's all of these things that we have to consider as to why we men who are like getting older, like these hunter-gatherers here. Let me see if I can actually pull up this famous image. These famous aboriginals, that picture I love, especially the bottom row. That picture I love because it's such a prime example of three generations that you see there on the left side, you have the young one and 
the middle guy is the older one and then the one far far left is uh is in the mid-range it's almost like looking at, at three different generations why are men not looking like this today because there's too many xenoestrogens in their life their foods are not organic grass-fed uh they're not they're not growing their own foods they're not hunting their own food so we are getting our foods from the supermarket and the more i research it the more i'm completely disgusted by what they're doing to it and i don't even want to go into the stuff that they're going to inject into these things in the near future like y'all get ready i've decided i will no longer buy any of my meats from the supermarket not even whole foods not even air one not even what are some of the other ones um, because all of these meats are not okay. Let's just put it in those terms. If you really want to know where your meats are coming from, you got to go to a local farm. At least you know their practices if you talk to some of the farmers, because that supermarket meat is a hell to the nut. Now, we don't live like these people do. We do not. We never did. So, we might be the same in terms of being human, but we have destroyed our DNA from generation to generation. There's so many people who are not breastfed or vaginally birthed. If you were not breastfed as a hunter gatherer, I mean, if you wouldn't survive, if you were not vaginally birthed, you wouldn't survive. So these people are coming from high stock, high quality humans that are surviving. We don't eat the way that they used to eat. We don't follow their circadian rhythm. Our soil is so depleted, but you guys want to fast or jump in cold water or do any of these crazy things to really search for optimal health. It's not logical, but we'll hear from other people. No, this is the answer. Do it. It's amazing. It, it did. It did. It. I could go and sit and talk about how things are great for me. And then the next person does what I've done and they feel terrible because we need to start looking at the individual that in lies the problem is that individuality is now gone we just speak in these broad strokes that anybody could just do this that and a third and we really need to start doing the deep dive on what does your gut look like what's your toxic bucket load if you have a bucket which I should have a bucket right here the load is high and everybody's toxic load in their bucket is at different levels. We all have toxins in that bucket, but they're all on different levels. So looking at these guys, again, looking at these guys and seeing how healthy they were. The mortality issues weren't because they weren't modern humans and they needed medication. The mortality issues of early death was because of childbirth you know, from unsanitary uh, um, uh, conditions and and uh, people going through famine and a woman could be unhealthy and bear a child and then that child would die or she would die because they had no modern medicine. As a hunter-gatherer, they fared quite well. They could live up to 80 years, these hunter-gatherers. They ate things like, especially in East Africa, they ate things like game, they fished, they ate bugs, they ate some fruits, some melons, some berries, some figs, some wild spinach, and they would only eat it in season. There was no Tupperware, no refrigerators. There wasn't any of this stuff. Their guts were strong. We die from disease because we have antibiotics. We have things to sterilize things. We don't have to live in the harsh climates anymore, and we don't have to starve anymore. So why are so many people sick? Our toxic bucket load is way too high. You guys are doing, they're trying to fast. Well, just fast, right? I've been eating really bad, so I'll just fast. And then my toxins are going to go away. No, my people, they're stored in your fat cells. They're in your liver. They're in your lymph system. They're everywhere. And just doing a fast is not going to just fix the problem. We got to look at your 24-hour day. We got to start deconstructing and reconstructing things that make more sense. Drinking coffee being exposed to chemicals, having your Wi-Fi on at night, not getting enough vitamin D. These are just small examples of why we don't look like them. 
right? And then of course, men are dealing with this overload of too much estrogen in their body, causing cancers and prostate issues and aromatization and gynecomastia, depression, low T, the list goes on and on because everybody likes to put a lot of emphasis on women having issues and women don't understand the whole menopause that men are going to going through. Even in their 20s, their testosterone is too low and they start having these domino effect chain reaction of feeling and looking like shite because their T levels are low and their estrogen levels are high and their dihydrotestosterone is too high. And then of course their whole biliary duct system of organs is overloaded and bogged down. They fasted because they didn't have a choice. That's why they fasted. None of them would be like, no, that's okay, I'm fasting. And I'm jumping in cold water because I'm trying to access my brown fat. They wouldn't do that. They would take time to take care of their adrenal system and rest and digest and be communal. We are no longer communal anymore. We're not. We're all against each other. We should all be on the same team. We should all learn about each other and we should all take care of each other's health. I do a lot of videos lately where I'm talking about the carnivore diet, the keto diet. I've been doing the same thing for years and years. And I'm saying that when you are a guru online, you don't always tell people when you're feeling bad. Sometimes you can't even recognize why you feel bad yourself. We've all woken up one day and can't understand why our neck hurts or our back hurts or we're digesting poorly or why we're getting sick all the time. We don't understand that ourselves. No one knows everything. So when people do these happy-go-lucky videos and everything's fantastic and you just need to do these five steps, life is never that simple. And that's the reason why I do videos that are soft call-outs. They're not hardcore call-outs. They're soft call-outs. I was watching Paul Sal one of Paul Saladino's videos, one of his older ones when he was a strong proponent of, of uh, carnivore. And he would say so many cool things. He's such an intelligent man. I'm not going to lie. Very, very intelligent. But the most intelligent person can be going through something that they've never experienced before. You know why he switched over to fruit. People can go through things, not know what's going on, be intelligent. It might take years for you as an individual to even know what's going on in your own body, let alone give advice to millions of people out there. So we all have to do our due diligence and take care. My whole video program is about taking care. That's it. Take care. People are like, where are you going to get your information from? And I'm like, just you guys. You guys are everything. You can look at stupid studies done by subjective company, companies. I'm, I'm so tired of studies because you can sit and have a vegan doctor and a carnivore doctor sit there and completely contradict each other. So sometimes we got to do our own research and actually find out what's going on with ourselves. We start off the same and then we start branching. We start off very similarly and we start branching off in the the destruction of our body. So if I go more and talk, if I go deep into like what some of these people ate beyond the fact that the, this image of these hunter gatherers, right? This image is, is so profound because they weren't exposed to these xenoestrogens right? They knew how to rest. If they couldn't eat something, they weren't doing cardio. They weren't paying bills. They weren't driving around all day long, stuck in traffic for two hours. The cortisol stress bucket in people is too high. The toxic overload. They didn't have this. Their stress was intermittent. Travel warfare, climates, cold temperatures, and lack of food because they had the love that we don't have everything else they were connected to, their gut health, the bacteria, the, the sun, the light, the, 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 the vitamin D, just their sensory was on point. Like we just use our eyes, our taste, our smell, our touch. People become addicted to sugar and they don't even know what real food tastes like anymore. So why would we compare ourselves to these men or these, these cultures, not just men, men and women? Why would we do that? We're not living our lives not even like that. What would it be like to live like a hunter gatherer for a month, right? I've been to Africa several times. Maybe I should go back to some of these Maasai tribe village people and live like they live because I think I would learn so much more about myself instead of just jumping into an ice bath and, and fasting for, you know, 24, 72, 
whatever, 21 days of fasting and not ever really addressing the point because uh, everybody I talk to who's fasting, they never get fixed. They might have temporary um, uh, an alleviation of certain symptoms and feel a little bit better, but they never get fixed. Their guts never get fixed. They never get rid of the histamine. It's like not gone. They can't just like put it to rest and move on with their life. They're still always battling with something major. That's the problem. Oh, good Lord. I am trying my best to give you guys an understanding that life is deep. It's not simple and it shouldn't be. Life should not be simple or else we would have no reason to live. We must struggle to get to joy, right? Without joy, there is, there's no joy without pain. You must struggle. You must go through things. That is what we should be as real primal humans living in the modern time. We have to try to mimic as best we can things that are more natural as best as we can. Because this, my people, is an RV camper made out of nothing but forever chemicals. Trust. So what can I do outside of the RV to get nature all around me and in me? Super huge, important point as I go into these videos. Now, um... Let's take a look at something else. I want to talk about the vegetation that hunter-gatherers ate that we don't eat. Stop comparing yourself to a hunter-gatherer because you're not. People keep saying, oh, fasting. Do you see those pictures of those men? Y'all don't look like, most people do not look like this. Okay? The average person does not look like this especially as we get older. So let's get into it. This is a today's watermelon. This is a real watermelon. That's a real watermelon. There's, look at that, the, the, the fruit part is very tiny. Look at today's watermelon. People don't know, people don't even know that our vegetation has been genetically modified, selectively bred, hybridized. It doesn't look like it used to look. Oh, it's freaking advertising. It's really foul. This is a banana, my people. Look at this. That is what a real banana looks like. Short, thick, stumpy and seeds that look like the sides of lemon seeds seeds these bananas are unedible and the fructose is very low that is how our hunter gatherers were able to eat fruit and not have issues like now non-alcoholic fatty liver disease that some people are getting from being fruitarians like you cannot make this stuff up in a handbag this is why i do these videos to give you guys perspective because if you don't see it you can just pretend like it doesn't exist. I have too many windows open. Look at me. Y'all know that I'm getting ready to do my challenge. This is a real banana. Look at that. Look at the difference between uh, a, a wild banana and, and uh, this is, sorry, this is not a real banana. This is the banana that we eat today, as in the real bananas we eat today. But a real, real banana that's growing wild looks nothing like this. Nothing. Filled with fructose and people are having issues People are always asking me, should I eat a banana if my potassium is low? And I said, no, because you're dealing with all that fructose. No, avocados, if you can if you can bear it. Look at this. This is a wild eggplant. This is an eggplant, my people. This is what today's eggplant looks like. You see how much we have Frankensteined our foods and you guys are trying to like jump in a cold bath and, and fast and do carnivore diets and expecting your body to respond. Look at this. This is a real carrot. That's a carrot, my people. Look at that. Look at that. Today's carrot, modern carrot, wild carrot. Yeah. Look at this. Wild corn, unedible. Today's corn. The we were our bodies are so freaking sensitive even though we're like cockroaches we are not 
design. Look at this advertising. Is that what I stopped on? Let's get rid of it. See the advertising? It's triggering. We are not meant to be eating the fruit that we ate today. So when people are trying to do carnivore with this kind of fruit, it it's the fruit of a, a wild fruit is going to be its most sweet when it's about to die, right? We still have to deal with all the starch, all of the bitterness in this plant because these plants must survive in the wild if they're super sweet. The, 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 from the Frankenstein fruits of today, bugs obliterate and will destroy wild fruits that look like today. So the ones from the past are barely edible, right? A lot of these things are poisonous, like the nuts and the seeds, the almonds, the pistachios, what other, there's more nuts that they had to soak to even eat these dang things. Almonds, right? They have, um, <laughs> wild almonds contain poisonous compound called amygdalin, amygdalin which can release cyanide. Cyanide, my people. You can't make this stuff up. Cashews, which produce a toxic shell around the cashew nut. Yes, that create a skin irritant and it's troublesome to your respiratory system unless you modify it. Brazil nuts with all that selenium, but guess what? Too much selenium in the body is a problem. Right, it's 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 toxic in large amounts to the body. Uh, a lot of these nuts, you got pecans, you've got toxins in it called juglone, which causes digestive issues when you guys are bloated on nuts. Uh, then we've got chestnuts, and they've got a lot of tenons in them, and tenons kind of rub your body of of iron. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. We cannot refer always to the, the hunter-gatherers when we're modern humans with a destroyed gut wall that's nice and open that's having this inflammatory reaction. And then you go out and do carnivore and you might feel good at first, but then you don't realize because you have leaky gut, you're losing minerals and then your electrolytes get jacked. And if your gallbladder is a problem, you, you oscillate between loose stool and constipation on carnivore. I know. So what do you do? Well, I don't suggest doing carnivore with a bunch of fruit. You know, love you, Paul, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think that people should do high fat to try to drive ketosis. But if you have a gallbladder problem, you can't do it. So now we've got to reevaluate which dietary measure would you do best in. Wi-Fi looks like it's glitching. I hope it doesn't do that in the recording. High fat, that's the way. That's a solution. And if you can't do high fat, you might have to do some tubers, right? Or maybe some white rice, some parsnip, some sweet potato for the short term until you can get that gallbladder sussed out to then try keto. If you want to, you don't have to do keto to be healthy. You can do low carb, but it must be done very carefully because when your body's dependent on carbs, you crash, you can crash very easily when glycogen storages get too low. And then you're back at the same up down blood sugar issue that you've been doing your whole life because we've been stuck on carbohydrates, starches, sugars, things that dysregulate our blood sugar and create damage, which is called ages, which is damaging the cell lining. Carnivore is a great idea. I think actually people should try it but don't think they should do a strict version of it forever. I think they should allow some plants to come and ride that line because we don't have the gut, unfortunately. You should be able to poop without fiber, but some people can't. For the short term, you might wanna add avocado for potassium if you don't have a histamine reaction to avocado, or a little bit of sauteed arugula, or a little bit of zucchini, or a little bit of asparagus or a cruciferous type uh, cooked so you don't have to worry about the goitrogenic effect for on your thyroid one time a day. So there's no need to roast Stephanie because I make sense. Yeah. Do I think that these people out there are being strict carnivore? No. I remember I was following Sverige before 
and he was a big carnivore guy and he had these like meetups and somebody went out to dinner with him and had a big glass of orange juice. Why are people having these large amounts of fruits? And then people are commenting on him because like, it's so contrary, right? Because all the vegans are addicted to all the fruit, right? What's going on with your blood sugar where you need the fruit? Are, are your electrolytes imbalanced? Are you having hypoglycemia? Are you dysglycemic? Is that why you need to add fruits and cardboard? Because you're never going to keto adapt. Like that's out the door, right? So then you've left with a bunch of meat and fruit. The liver may not be happy. Happy, not happy. You increase your water levels in your body, but then the fructose has to go through the liver. Just a thought, especially if you guys have gallbladder issues and you've noticed that your gallbladder is getting all backed up with cholesterol because, well, you're eating lean meat and a lot of it. And uh, yeah, just the stuff I always talk about. But I just wanted to give you guys a visual of what some true hunter gatherers look like, how the men were all freaking shredded. They were useful. They were connected to nature. They fasted because they had to, but then they rested and we don't. If you find yourself inclined to flat fast to take down extreme inflammation at the moment, do for a short term, do it at 24 hours, stop, find a time where you can rest, get your inflammatory markers down. Doing a ketogenic diet is almost like fasting because you are trying to drop and regulate your glucose and up your ketones, which are far less inflammatory and can balance your body and put you into homeostasis. Now it's time for me to go and uh, work with my horses today. So thank you everyone for today's live and work my ass off. I'm doing a challenge. Hopefully I can get this done by May 1st. I'm literally killing myself. As you can see, I'm researching everything that I can to do something. And not only am I doing the research on all of this, the challenge, because it, it, it's a challenge slash course where you're going to get information plus have challenges and videos and a bunch of stuff, a bunch, a bunch of tools to get you right on all three diets, not on my website. I mean, not on a, any social media platform, but on my uh, website. Um, when I look up all this stuff, I really learn so much more when you actually can see what the fruit look like and why some people have a damaged liver from, you know, from eating too many carbs, high blood sugar, diabetes, drinking, and then all of a sudden they quit all of that, but now their liver enzymes are elevated and they're trying to eat carnivore with a bunch of fruit and it's not working for them, right? So we just need to have as much information as we can to then do our own research and make our own decisions without people saying, you know, I eat this diet, so you should eat this diet. You should eat the diet that works for you, period. Yep, period. So you can follow me on Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic. You can book a consultation. I'm opening up dates today uh, and talk to me personally as I set you straight because I've just done this for so long. And at least I can say that I've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You guys have seen my real stories, real people with real stories, and they don't lie. They're all saying very similar things. They're just telling their stories. So, yeah, don't use me for the example. The woman who's 55 and going on 56, who's got the freaking energy, even though she's burnt to the crisp. I moved to a raw land to get closer to nature, 10 acres. I'm trying to get the next 10 next to me and have horses and have uh, probably some geese, geese or ducks, because I, I have a wet water, water creek. And it would just be so cute to see them play in it and frolic in the water uh, and chickens. Yeah, it's a good thing. Life is good. Uh, my challenge is uh, you can't cannot sign up for it yet. I will announce it when it's ready. Go to my website at stephanieperson.com, book a consultation. My Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook is Stephanie the Business Person. If you guys are still on those platforms, I know. One day I won't have to be on them. But how will you find me? Maybe it'll be meetups, right? All right, and we're out. Peace. Almost 16 years doing this.